Good evening, folks, and welcome to the Massachusetts Firefighting Academy's graduation of call, vol cla call volunteer class 111. My name is Dennis Ball, and I'm the deputy director of training at the Massachusetts Firefighting Academy. I have the absolute honor and privilege of being the master of ceremonies for tonight's ceremony. Welcome to all family and friends, dignitaries, on behalf of State Fire Marshal John Davin and the men and women of the Department of Fire Services. For those family and friends who are unable to make it here this, this evening, uh, this event is being recorded. Uh, will be available tomorrow morning-ish um, on YouTube. And I'd like to just thank uh, Christina Mitchell. She's sitting right here, and she's going to be making that happen from a technical standpoint. So thank you, Christina. So at this time, I'd ask you to please join me in welcoming our presiding officer for th this evening's event, State Fire Marshal John Davin, accompanied by the official party. Thank you, Mark. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chiefs of the Department. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to rise for the entrance of Class 111 and the posting of our national and state colors. Ladies and gentlemen, Class 111 was led in by Sam Munley, Rhode Island Professional Firefighters Pipes and Drum. Uh, Sam is the Deputy Chief, Westport Fire, retired. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> Detail, post of colors. I'd ask you to remain standing for our national anthem, presented by Cat Jones. Ms. Jones?
what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the Now, could just remain standing for the invocation delivered by Chaplain Dave Murphy. Most Heavenly Father, we first pray, dear Father, that you will be present with us this evening and that this ceremony will be pleasing to you. We thank you for this day you have given us and especially for this occasion that brings us together as we celebrate the accomplishments of these graduates here tonight. Thank you for the energy and commitment that it took for them to complete Fire Academy training. I am sure it sometimes seemed impossible. Thank you for their family members and friends who provided the support and encouragement these graduates needed to finish this demanding work. Thank you for their instructors, and advisors and all who helped them through their course studies and physical job training. I pray that you will bless each graduate here this evening, reminding them of what they have overcome and accomplished during their time spent at the Massachusetts Firefighting Academy. Finally, Heavenly Father, I pray that you will bless this time tonight with your presence, knowing that what we say and do here tonight will not only be acceptable to you, but also a blessing. In your name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Please be seated. Make yourself comfortable. So welcome, everyone. I'd like to introduce the um, members of the official stage party. So the Department of Fire Services is a vital public safety agency that helps work to keep our communities safe. We provide firefighter training, obviously, public education, fire prevention code enforcement, licensing, fire investigation, hazardous material responses, and incident support throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The person entrusted to lead the Department of Fire Services, State Fire Marshal John Davin. The director of the Massachusetts Firefighting Academy, Mr. Eric Lippman. <laughs> Chaplain Dave Murphy, St. Patrick's Church, Wareham. <laughs> Represent, representing the F Massachusetts Fire Training Council, which is our governing body, Chief Frank Barassi, we're hope at fire. Assistant Program Coordinator, Bruce, uh, Ga uh, yeah, Bruce, Gavin. Bruce Anton, Captain, Swansea Fire. <laughs> Program Coordinator, Mr. Christopher Norris, Chief, East Hampton Fire. <laughs> Just a couple of quick uh, thank yous to the staff. So every organization has members behind the scenes that support our mission. 
Their dedication and efforts are actually truly the backbone of our, of our success as instructors, program coordinators, and officers. Thanks to program co administrative assistant uh, Kerry Marquardt and Ashley uh, Payette, um, and as well as the registration crew. Uh, you're up there hiding, so say, say hi. I'd also like to thank and acknowledge lead instructor Mr. Anton, along with the staff instructors and support staff. They are fire service professionals, sharing their passion with the fire service. Emergency events occur throughout the Commonwealth daily. It is almost assured that an instructor or a support staff member within our system was a participant of that event. Their experiences are shared Timely lessons are learned, lively discussion and debate ensues, and at times resulting in revisions in our lesson plans and, ac and growth in academic uh, thought. As a result, the citizens of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts benefit, and the recruits sit here this evening prepared for the challenges of, of the job. So thank you for your passion and your dedication to the support. At this time, it's my honor and privilege to introduce our State Fire Marshal, John Davin, for a few words. Thank you, Mr. Ball. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, chiefs, and esteemed graduates. Tonight, we gather to celebrate this pivotal moment as these recruits become Massachusetts firefighters. Class 111, let me be the first to welcome you to the best job in the world. Although I'm proud to serve as your state fire marshal today, 25 years ago, I knew very little about firefighting when I walked through those very same academy doors. I credit this institution for providing countless opportunities for me to develop my skills, expand my knowledge, and to challenge myself. I wholeheartedly believe in this system and am committed to ensuring that Massachusetts firefighters have access to the highest quality training, state-of-the-art equipment, and exceptional instructors so that you can best serve the citizens of the Commonwealth. Together, we will protect our communities through professionalism, dedication, integrity, and training. More than two-thirds of the communities in the Commonwealth are protected by call or volunteer firefighters. You are vital to the fire service and a key partner in keeping our communities safe. As a former fire chief in Western Massachusetts, I relied heavily on call and volunteer departments for mutual aid responses. I admire your dedication and willingness to work in addition to your work and your family commitments. The past 15 weeks have given you a very basic understanding of the tactics and strategies you will need to keep yourself, your fellow firefighters, and your community safe. Your learning is not coming to an end but rather, it's just beginning. You must continue to train, come back to the academy again and again, ask questions, go to conferences, read, inquire about what other departments around the country are doing. You owe it to yourself, your department, and your community to be the best firefighter possible. Although we never know what our next call will be, I can assure you that no two days will ever be the same. Gone are the days that firefighters just battle fires. This is an all-hazards role that will challenge you to think on your feet and solve real-world problems under the most difficult conditions. You may respond to everything from an alarm activation, a medical emergency, a motor vehicle accident, and a chemical spill. You'll conduct fire drills, install car seats, check smoke alarms, and give tours to aspiring firefighters. I hope you proudly wear the Maltese cross on your shoulder, as it is known around the world as a symbol of protection and a badge of honor. Your presence alone will offer hope to strangers on their worst day and bring calm in the midst of chaos. Your community has placed an enormous amount of trust in you. Honor that promise and never ever do anything to jeopardize it. 
There is no doubt that firefighting is difficult, both physically and emotionally. I implore you to stay in shape. Continue your physical training. A fit body will serve you well when you need it the most. Equally as important, take care of yourself mentally. Do things you enjoy. Spend time with your family, take a vacation, and slow down. Your department will be here when you get back. Firefighting is not for the faint of heart, but it is deeply rewarding, honorable, and exhilarating. You'll never ever be bored or lonely. You'll work as a team, you'll become a family, and you'll forge friendships that will last a lifetime. Thank you, Class 111, for answering the call to serve. On behalf of the Massachusetts Department of Fire Services and the Massachusetts Firefighting Academy, I extend my heartfelt congratulations to each and every one of you and wish you a safe and rewarding career. Congratulations. Thank you, Mark. At this time, I'd like to invite Massachusetts Firefighting Academy's Director Littman to the podium for a few words. Good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome family, friends, active and retired uniformed personnel, and the fire chiefs in attendance to celebrate the graduation of call volunteer recruit class 111. It is an honor for me to be standing here tonight as the director of the Massachusetts Firefighting Academy. My 30 year firefighting history, working as a firefighter paramedic, senior private, lieutenant, and captain began and ended working for combination departments within the Commonwealth. It provided me with firsthand experience and understanding of how critical call and volunteer firefighters are to fire departments in the communities they serve throughout our great state. To the family, friends, and significant others uh, of the recruits graduating today, I want to thank you and express my sincere gratitude on behalf of the entire Massachusetts Firefighting Academy staff for supporting them during their training. I know from personal experience as a graduate of an MFA recruit class in 1996 that your loved ones graduating today did not make it through the rigorous academic and fire ground education without your support. I can assure all of you that they have been provided the foundational firefighting skills in accordance with the highest industry standards from instructors, many of which you see here tonight, that have hundreds of years of experience collectively serving their communities. The recruits will graduate tonight to become part of the finest profession based in service, honor, integrity, and the trust of the citizens in their respective cities and towns throughout the Commonwealth. To quote Albert Einstein, only a life lived for others is a life worthwhile. To the recruits of CV Class 111, congratulations, you made it. Continue to remain teachable from your training officers and predecessors, some of which are here tonight, that have come before you. Most of all, serve the citizens of the Commonwealth with pride, integrity, and honor that has transcended this profession in Massachusetts for over 250 years back to when only the highest esteemed members of the community were asked to be volunteers on the rattle watch at night to alert citizens of a fire. Most importantly, be safe and take care of your brothers and sisters of the fire service so that everyone goes home to their families at the end of shift. Thank you. I'd like to ask, invite program coordinator Chris Norris to the podium for a few words. Thank you, Chris. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the graduation of Class 111 of the Call Volunteer 
the Coop Firefighter Training Program. As you heard earlier, the lead instructor for Class 111 was Mr. Antone. Mr. Antone, along with all the other instructors that you had throughout your program, provided the leadership and the guidance for all of you to be here tonight. Each of them continually brought the dedication, the knowledge, the commitment, and certainly the passion to this program to help all of you succeed. To all the friends and family here with us tonight, it was with your support and encouragement that enabled the men and women of this program to succeed. You have become part of that firefighting family tonight, and I know you will continue to support them in all of their future endeavors. Just to give you an idea and background of the Call Volunteer Program and what your family members and loved ones have gone through over the last 15 weeks. The Call Volunteer Recruit Firefighter Training Program is a 240-hour training program that teaches the core foundations and fundamentals of our profession to the national standard. Students going through this program learn how to properly don their personal protective clothing, properly don their self-contained breathing apparatus, carry, raise, and lower of many different kinds of ground ladders, conduct primary search for any tra trapped occupants with inside structures, advance hose lines through a building, fire suppression, vehicle extrication, and hazardous materials, just to name a few. These program components and evolutions help to develop a platform for these firefighters to operate on the scene of any emergency efficiently and effectively to respond and mitigate any emergency. All of you have sacrificed and succeeded, and I hope we have met all of your goals when you started this program. Graduation from this program is a testament to your character and certainly your perseverance to accomplish a core foundation to your continued learning in this profession. In addition to this program, Many of you had to balance other time commitments, such as working full-time or part-time, taking other classes for school, family obligations and other commitments, as well as outside interests and hobbies. You have all faced numerous challenges throughout the program, and you certainly will continue to face similar challenges in the fire service. These hazards and challenges don't change based on if you're a career, a call, or a volunteer firefighter, and neither does the response or the professional service that will be received. This afternoon, I had the opportunity to look back at your class schedule very quickly and just thought of everything everyone in this class had to overcome during that time. As you were starting your class back in January, your families, your friends, and many others were getting ready to settle in for the upcoming winter months most likely in the comforts of their warm home to relax after the many holiday events. Not all of you. All of you were going to your primary jobs or school, and then after that, coming to our class for an additional four hours of training, just to do it all over again the following days. During these past few months, all of you have sacrificed to improve your competencies and your skill levels as a firefighter to better serve your communities. Many of these sacrifices included working through some minor injuries, missing family events, and certainly the long nights of studying and the upcoming exams. As you quickly reflect back and think about these times, I would remind you and everyone here tonight that this is certainly a reflection of your commitment and dedication to your communities and the sacrifice all of you ha had to give in order to pass this program and graduate. Through this program, you have demonstrated the core competencies to be a firefighter and face many of these ongoing challenges. I am very proud of all of you for your decision to get involved in the fire service. Each of you had certainly your own strengths and weaknesses, but together you were able to accomplish the core mission. Congratulations on your accomplishment. Continue your training. I wish you all the best, and please be careful in all that you do. Thank you, and congratulations to you all. At this, at this time, I'd like to call upon 
Recruit Assistant Coordinator, Mr. Anton, to call the roll of today's graduates. Uh, friends and family, please approach for pitches uh, when your firefighter is called. And I'm going to give you a demarcation point because we are actually filming here. So, Christine, where would you like? Second, second row. Before we uh, distribute the diplomas, uh, any any uh, veterans in the audience tonight? Veterans, can you please stand to so we can acknowledge yourself? Thank you so much for your service. <laughs> and I'd ask any uh, law enforcement, any law enforcement, to please stand, identify yourself, so we can thank you. Thank you. Chiefs and presenters, if we could just keep the uh, presentation to a, uh, a handoff and handshake. Rather than an actual penny, that would be very much appreciated. Thank you. From the Cushnet Fire Department, I'd like to call up Chief Thomas Fallen. I would also like to call up Firefighter Shane Ramos from the Cushnet Fire Department. <laughs> Graduating firefighter, Emily Brown. Graduating firefighter, Paige Phillips. From the Dartmouth District 1 Fire Department, Deputy Chief Jake Bentoncourt. And I would also like to call up Chief Lancaster. Graduating firefighter, Ian Aguilar. This time, I'd like to also call up Lieutenant Charles Bailey from the New Bedford Fire Department. <laughs> Mr. 
Lieutenant Bailey is the father of graduating firefighter Connor Bailey. I'd like to call up Chief Rob Reardon from the Duxbury Fire Department. Graduating firefighter, Scott Hill. From the Freetown Fire Department, I'd like to invite Deputy Chief Neil LaFleur to the stage. <laughs> Graduating firefighter, David Gates. I'd like to call retired firefighter Charles MacCumber to the stage, please, from Freetown Fire. <laughs> retired firefighter Charles MacCumber is the father of graduating firefighter Robert MacCumber. From the Lakeville Fire Department, I'd like to welcome Deputy Chief Pam Garant to the stage. <laughs> Graduating firefighter, Brett Moss. From the Mattapoisett Fire Department, I'd like to invite Chief Andrew Murray to the stage. <laughs> Graduating firefighter, Rebecca Crowley.
graduating firefighter, Amanda McCann. Graduating firefighter, Alex Vieira. From the Midway Fire Department, I'd like to invite to the stage Chief Jeffrey Lynch. <laughs> Graduating firefighter Kevin Leland. From the Onset Fire Department, I'd like to invite to the stage Assistant Chief Howard Anderson and Deputy Chief Jeffrey Dyes. I would also like to welcome to the stage Police Officer James White from the Wareham Police Department. Officer White is the father of graduating firefighter, Jacob Oxetter. Graduating firefighter, William Burke. I'd like to welcome to the stage retired Chief Warrant Officer Andrew Duty to the stage, U.S. Coast Guard. <laughs> retired Chief Warrant Officer Andrew Duty is the father of graduating firefighter, Jared Duty. I'd like to call to the stage U.S. Army Specialist 5th Class 
Frank Frazier to the stage. U.S. Army 5th Class Specialist Frank Frazier is the grandfather of graduating firefighter Jacob Frazier. Graduating firefighter, Nathaniel Gaybory. Graduating firefighter Owen Gurnier. I'd like to call to the stage at this time Assistant Chief Patrick Haskell from the Wareham Fire Department and retired firefighter Robert Haskell, Otis Air Force Base and Air National Guard Fire Department. Assistant Chief Haskell and Firefighter Robert Haskell. Assistant Chief Haskell is the father and Robert Haskell is the grandfather of graduating firefighter Sidney Haskell. From the Plimpton, Plimpton Fire Department, excuse me, I'd like to call up Chief Cheryl Duddy. <laughs> Graduating firefighter Rebecca Cullity. Graduating firefighter Matthew Johnson. <laughs> 
graduating firefighter, Michael Murphy. Graduating firefighter, Justin Shepard. Yeah, number 75, if you haven't guessed by now. The next gentleman you've already met, Rehoboth Fire Chief Frank Baresi. I'd also like to call Firefighter Ed Burgess from the Norton Fire Department. Firefighter Ed Burgess is the father of graduating firefighter Ben Burgess. I'd like to call Deputy Chief Jeff Razzall from the Rehoboth Fire Department. <laughs> Deputy Chief Razzall is the father-in-law of graduating firefighter Austin Holland. to welcome to the stage firefighter Theodore Sarazin from the Rehoboth Fire Department. <laughs> Theodore Sarazin is the father of graduating firefighter Aiden Sarazin. From the Rochester Fire Department, I'd like to welcome Chief Scott Weigel to the stage. <laughs> Graduating firefighter, Anthony Gardenia. From the Swansea Fire Department, 
I'd like to welcome to the stage Deputy Chief Michael Patterson. <laughs> Graduating firefighter Richard Albanaz. Graduating firefighter, Bruce Katz. Graduating firefighter, Landon Rowe. From the West Bridgewater Fire Department, I'd like to welcome to the stage Chief Lincoln Tebow. I also like to welcome to the stage Police Officer Christopher Packard from the West Bridgewater Police Department. Police Officer Christopher Packard is the husband of graduating firefighter Nicole Packard. From the Westport Fire Department, Chief Daniel Baldwin. <laughs> Graduating firefighter, Chad Wilkie. Class, please rise. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you class one, one, one. Thank you so much. Congratulations.
At this time, I'd like to invite Chief Barassi to the, pro to the podium to present the Martin H. McNamara Outstanding Recruit Award on behalf of the Massachusetts Fire Training Council. Chief. Behalf of the uh, Mass Fire Training Council, congratulations, 111. This is always an honor and a pleasure for me. Um, but I do have a note before I present this tonight. I was approached by Chief Instructor Antone and some of the other instructors, and they told me this was one of the hardest decisions they've had to make in the history of this program. Unfortunately, there can only be one winner, but they said it was one of the most difficult ones they've done. And I've done a lot of these, and for them to say that, it certainly means a lot. In November 2003, Martin McNamara, a call firefighter for the town of Lancaster, Mass., was killed by operating at a structure fire. To remember his ultimate sacrifice and honor his commitment to the call and volunteer fire service in Massachusetts, the Massachusetts Fire Training Council created the Mass Martin H. McNamara Award for the outstanding student of each call volunteer recruit class. This program's curriculum is designed to train, educate, and evaluate students in the basic skills of the firefighting profession. This course is demanding both academically and physically. Just completing the course is truly an accomplishment worthy of recognition. In each class, there is one student who is selected, who has excelled and, and evaluate, I'm sorry, <laughs> is named the outstanding student of the class. My apologies. This recommendation is based upon the student's successful achievement in both academic and practical skills operations. At this time, I'd like to invite Chief Robert Ridden of the Duck Street Fire Department to the stage. I am pleased to present the Martin H. McNamara Outstanding Recruit Award of Class 111 to Recruit Number 58, Scott Hill. Congratulations, outstanding. So each class is assigned a class spokesperson to represent the recruit class. The re this recruit is selected by the assistant uh, recruit coordinators and is responsible for all class leadership and all communications between the recruits and the academy staff. It is now time for me to call upon spokesperson for class 111, recruit 52, Jacob Frazier, on set fire. Good evening. To start, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm recruit Jacob Frazier from the Onset Fire Department, or as many of you guys know me, number 52. It has been my absolute privilege and honor to be your class president and your class spokesman. For the last four months of our training, I would like to start off by saying a very big thank you to all of our hardworking instructors who have taken the time out of their busy schedules to teach, train, and continue to motivate us by never giving up. These instructors, have given their experience and their training, and they've paid it forward to us so we can experience a good training. Excuse me. I'd also like to say a really big thank you to our support staff, to our crib people, and our administration, our administration staff. They complete all the critical work that we do not see in the background, and without them, none of this would happen. To our families and loved ones, we owe you an immense debt of gratitude. Your unwavering support understanding along with the sacrifices have been the bedrock upon, upon which have built our dreams. 
For most of us, this is something we have dreamed of since we were little. And we shouldn't have made it here if it wasn't for your continuous, if it wasn't for you continuously standing by our sides, encouraging us to keep pushing forward, even though when times got tough. You have stood by us through the long hours of our training, the moments of doubt and the challenges we have faced along the way. Today we are standing on the threshold of our new chapter. We carry your love and encouragement in our hearts, knowing that we cannot have reached this milestone in our lives without you. I remember our very first day of orientation here at the Bridgewater campus, driving down a terribly paved road at night in the pouring rain. Little did we know it rained all but two days during our time here. That was awesome. On our way down that terribly paved road, we passed a prison to our right, then pulled up to a training campus with a perimeter surrounded by barbed wire. Walking into a room with 36 other recruits from all different towns, I was nervous and unsure what to expect. As I looked around the room, I saw strangers ranging from the ages of 18 to 51, 58, excuse me, years old coming from different backgrounds and different occupations. As the youngest recruit in this class, I had no idea what to expect at all. I didn't know if I was going to fit in or even trust any one of you to be in a burning building with. I do now, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> During these 15 weeks of physically and mentally demanding training, I have never felt more at home than walking through the gate with barbed wire wrapped around it. I no longer consider those same 32 recruits strangers, for they have become my family going through some of the greatest mental and physical challenges together, continuing to encourage each other throughout the hard days and making sure that no man or woman is left behind. There is not enough group of people that I would want to have to go this through, that I would not have wanted to go through this with. Throughout these 15 weeks, we have all grown as individuals, becoming a strange vision, becoming stronger vision, versions of ourselves, reaching goals we once thought were impossible, I am immensely grateful to have the pleasure to stand here today to congratulate those among us, to thank the people who made it possible for our dreams to come true, who saw strength and courage within us and didn't let us give up. I am extremely proud to watch each and every one of you of us move to the next steps of our lives. Being able to follow within the footsteps of some of the greatest men and women of our inspiration. In closing, I pray that all of you make it home safe every single night. I hope that every incident, every day, that you all make it home. I pray that the Lord keeps us, that the Lord keeps each and every one of you safe and healthy throughout your life and guide you down the road of a right path. May you all live safe and congratulations to Class 111 of the Massachusetts Fire Academy. Thank you. I would like to call up number 57 and number 73, the makers of the plaque. Jacob, Jacob, before you get comfortable, hey, come here. <laughs> Folks, right, the plaque, bring it up. Stand right up here. So there are many, 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 many traditions within the fire service. Each class presents a plaque to the instructors to, to be displayed on campus. It represents their spirit and it marks their effort. It serves as an inspiration for generations of firefighters to come. So I'm going to ask or invite the instructors on either side of the uh, stage to come on up and take a photograph with your, uh, your recruits and accept the plaque. Thank you. Just pile in, do the best you can.
Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. I'd ask everyone to stand for a benediction by Chaplain Murphy. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence with us during this graduation ceremony. We ask now for your almighty spirit to come upon our graduates as they, with their families and friends, celebrate this tremendous achievement. Thank you for this time we have had together honoring those who have persevered and done so well during their training. I thank you for each graduate's accomplishments and their commitments. I ask you to not only bless them, but to give them the strength, courage, and guidance for the responsibilities they will now enter into. As they return to their communities, help them to show forth in their lives the highest ideals of the firefighter's honor. Keep each of them safe, both in and out of harm's way. Be with them, Heavenly Father, as they go forward with pride and confidence, ready to face what is before them, depending on you for their strength and comfort. Go with us now, keeping us always mindful of your presence, in your love for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes this evening's ceremony. On behalf of State Fire Marshal John Davin and the men and women of the Department of Fire Services, I'd like to thank you for joining us this evening on this very, very special occasion. We wish each member of Class 111 only the best in their careers. I ask you to remain standing for the departure of the, the official party, followed by the Chiefs of the Department, and then Piper Manley will lead out Class 111. Class 111, come to attention. Follow for your department duties. Thank you.